FormKit Pro now ships with a slider input. Let's take a look. The slider input is an advanced version of the range input that ships with native HTML. Here on my screen, I have a basic HTML range input. Out of the box, it gives me a control handle on a track, and that's about it. it doesn't really tell me what my currently selected value is. I have no way of knowing what the minimum and maximum ends of my range are, uh, and that's the range input. If we change our range input to a slider, it looks the same, but immediately when we hover, we can see that we get a tooltip here showing me the value, and using that, I can determine the bounds of my range here, 0 to 100. All of the same props that you're used to in native HTML for the range input apply here. We can give a minimum value for our range, a maximum value for our range, the step that we would like to increment by, and then an initial value. Now I have a slider that's stepping in increments of 25 between 100 and 500. Just like the native range input, you can use the arrow keys to navigate. But what's unique about the slider input is if you hold the shift key, you can jump by 10 times increments. So here I am jumping at an increment of 250 because I'm holding down the shift key. You can also hold down the meta key. Um, Windows, this is control. On Mac OS, this is command. So with command and the arrow keys, I can jump to the beginning and end of my range. We also support text input. So if I type 300, I get 300 on my range input. If I type something out of bounds, like 1,000, then I snap to the maximum allowed value within my range. Now let's talk a little bit about that tooltip. The default behavior of the tooltip is that it shows on hover, as you can see on this slider. Using the tooltip prop and supplying a Boolean value of true or false, you can force the tooltip to always display or to never show. I don't know why you would do this. This is basically a regression to a native HTML range input, but if that's what you want, the option's there. You can supply custom formatting to your slider tooltip using the tooltip format prop and giving it a function. The function is going to receive the value and the handle. This will be important later. And then you can return a formatted string that you would like to display in the tooltip. In this case, we're just adding the label value ahead of the actual value. Another thing that the slider input can do that the native range input cannot is support multiple values. Here you can see I have a slider with an initial value of 50. If we change that value to be an array with a lower and upper value, then we render two control handles and the value that gets returned by the input is an array. These values will always be sorted from lowest to highest. And you can see here that as I drag my lower control handle past 350, 350 becomes the lower value, and I'm now modifying the upper value. We can combine our tooltip formatting with multiple values to create some pretty interesting stuff. For example, here is a spacing estimator input. Don't actually do this. That shows you the approximate distance between two arbitrary points. And using our tooltip formatting, we can return different emoji based on the sentiment that someone wants to provide for their opinion of FormKit, all the way up to unicorn. Now, sometimes when you're rendering slider inputs, it's helpful to allow the user to type. And it's not really known that you can just type while the input is focused. So it's helpful to show a linked input that the user can enter the data into. Sometimes you see this for... Um, things like availability calendars where you're trying to slice the data by price range. Using the show input prop, you can show associated inputs. So on our single input, we get a linked input for just the value. And on a multi input, we get a linked input for the minimum and the maximum value. And as I enter new values in here, uh, the information updates. And if I reduce the value here and blur the input, they end up being sorted correctly from lowest to highest. Now these linked inputs are just additional form kit inputs of type number. So using the input adders prop and the min and max input adders props, I can configure these inputs just like I would any other form kit input. Here, I'm gonna use section schema to put a prefix dollar sign in these inputs and then targeting each input individually, I can supply labels. 
If we look down in the source code here, we can see that these are of type number from the FormKit library, and all of my attributes are applying as you'd expect. Sometimes it's helpful on a slider input to show marks. Uh, they give the users a sense of the scale that's being operated on as well as what the steps that are available to them are. On a slider, you can enable marks with the marks prop. By default, marks are going to be rendered at every step. So on this slider, there is now a tick mark at every 10 increments on my scale. If I want to show labels, I can enable those with an additional prop, mark labels. Now we're outputting the value of each tick mark below. Uh, and this is really helpful for showing users exactly what the range of the scale is and what options are available within the slider selection. Marks on a slider do not have to be locked to the available steps. If you want to supply custom marks to a slider input, then give an array of objects with at and label values. And those will be rendered on your slider at the values you provided with the labels you provided. We can see here, we now have a temperature scale that I can freely drag through with important key temperatures highlighted. If I wanna ensure that users have to select a value that is one of the marks I provided, you can do that with the snap to marks prop. Now the user selection must be on one of the tick marks. And it doesn't matter, these can be arbitrary distances from each other, uh, but the user selection will snap to the next available mark. One last feature of the slider input that I think is pretty cool is the ability to show chart data associated with values on your slider. For this example, I have a function that's gonna produce an array that's gonna look like this. It's gonna be filled with objects and each one's gonna have an at and a value. This is very similar to the value for my marks array. And the at is where on my slider the value should be and the value is just the value. So if I take my chart data and I apply it to my input, you can see that we get a chart rendered uh, and its selection mirrors the selection of my handles on the range input. Now this chart is drawn for you just from this object, very simple. If you're able to distill your data down into relative values, then you can render a bar chart on top of a slider input that easily. So that's been a quick whirlwind tour of the new slider input. We hope you find it useful in your apps. Uh, please let us know what you think in our Discord. Thanks.